Hey everybody, welcome back. Psychic Eric here. Today I'm going to be doing my second film review on this channel. Um, had nothing better to do today, so I figured I'd, you know, engage a little bit and do something because, like I said, uh, my record searches and this month in general has been pretty slow, so I figured I had to do something on here, you know. It just feels like I'm not interacting at all. <laughs> um, I just like to keep you guys engaged and, you know, spread my thoughts on different stuff. So uh, today we're going to be looking at a classic film that I discovered last year. I think uh, around the same time I discovered Sorcerer, so it's probably September, October, I think. And uh, I first rented this on YouTube, and this is a film I've actually never heard of uh, that I can recall. And I, I look up a lot of films, you know, from the 70s, because I think the 70s, honestly, is like my favorite era in cinema, you know, since things were kind of changing with, uh, you know, independent filmmakers like... Dennis Hopper making Easy Rider kind of sparked a lot of things, and that's just one example, but um, it just kind of sparked, you know, with new Hollywood coming around the corner, I just like discovering this kind of stuff, you know. Films like this um, spread a lot of different topics that, you know, generally today we take as a grain of salt and look back on and appreciate stuff that people didn't really get to see as fresh you know, back in the day, so, anyways, I won't keep you too much further here, but, um, we're going to be talking about a film called Don't Look Now, this came out in 1973, and it was directed by Nicholas Rogue, I think that's how you pronounce his last name, um, this is not the original album art, this is the Criterion Collection, so they usually just, uh, customize their, uh, DVD covers, this is the Blu-ray, um, I've been getting into a lot of Criterion films lately. Um, so if you guys don't know Criterion, they kind of they kind of customize these packages, these films very neatly, and they restore them really nice, um, packed with several features on here, um, including like documentary shorts and stuff like that. This is a 4K digital restoration. And they specialize in a lot of like different films, you know, not just the classics, but a lot of stuff that's kind of slipped under the rug that we don't hear about normally, and they should be considered classic. And I would I would say this is right up there. So I don't know if it's an American film because I think he was I think the director was based out of maybe Italy. I'm not I'm not sure on that one, but I think he was a of different. I think he was of European descent, and. Um, so don't look now. How do I sum it up? Um, I bas well, first off, I didn't really do too much like uh, background check before this review, so I'm, I'm kind of doing this on the spot. So I apologize if anything gets falsified. I'm gonna try not to, so so you guys get the right info here. But um, I've only seen this film like three times, I think, in full. So I probably saw this last, maybe. I don't know, maybe back in February, March, just to kind of get, you know, because I thought I was going to do another review around that time, so I, I watched it then. Um, so I'm going to recall best I can with, and, you know, put some images up like last time and kind of describe what the story's about. So um, I can read the back here as well. So Donald Sutherland and Julie Christie mesmerize as a British married couple on an extended trip to Venice following a family tragedy. While in that elegantly decaying city, they have a series of inexplicable, terrifying, and increasingly dangerous experiences. A masterpiece from Nicholas Rogue, Don't Look Now, adapted from a story, is a brilliantly disturbing tale of the supernatural as renowned for its innovative editing, haunting cinematography, and its naturalistic eroticism and unforgettable climax and denotement. One of the great endings in horror history. That about sums it up. See you later, guys. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so it's basically about a family tragedy that starts with um, Don Sutherland and Julie Christie. They're both married. They're I think their last name's the Baxters, and they're um, basically just kind of lounging in their house. He's working on a project, trying to uh, illustrate his new project coming up, where he's going to be uh, working on a cathedral. And he's looking at these different photographs, and um, 
Basically, while all that's happening, his kids are playing outside, and his daughter's wearing this red raincoat, and it's very, I mean, it <laughs> shows it on the cover. It's very important detail as far as uh, what the film is kind of pushing forward with the narrative. And uh, so basically the kids are out playing, and she happens to throw a ball into this pond. Um, as I recall, I don't really understand why she did this. I think she was just fooling around, and her brother is watching her as well, and things are happening in, inside the house and outside this house. And while he's working on uh, this project, we're seeing this red raincoat, which is presumably his daughter in this photo, he, he senses something is happening to his kids outside. You know, parental supervision is no, is no such thing in his world, I guess. But uh, he basically goes outside because he, he feels something's happening and races outside to find his daughter is drowned. And it's just a really, really sad, you know, opening to this film. It doesn't just kind of sets the mood for a really bad taste, you know, in some ways. You feel really bad for... Uh, Donald Sutherland's character here but as the film progresses it turns out I can't tell if it's a year later it doesn't really specify how much time has passed but the couple is moved has moved to Venice where he's working on this project as an architect on this new cathedral that he's building and you, you almost get a sense of them trying to uh, feel like you know after this grievance they're trying to move on with their lives and try to you know, have start a bear, have a stronger marriage, um, having lo lost a child, and they sent their son off to boarding school, which they thought, you know, maybe was a good good deal on their part, so they can, um, you know, recuperate after um, this this tragedy that's happened. So they do that, and several things happen. They meet a medium, a blind medium rather, and her sister at this cafe one day. And Julie Christie's character, she's in the restroom with them, two sisters, and she's basically telling him that, I see his daughter, you know, she, this woman sees their daughter. Julie Christie's character faints, and she has to get taken to the hospital, and, you know, she almost believes these two sisters, or the one sister, with the psychic ability, she can, um, she has second sight, she can... Uh, read people's minds and foresee the future and um, you know see her see their child and so Donald Sutherland the whole time he's he he would like to believe her but she but he thinks that you know she's some sort of fraud trying to uh, manipulate them into thinking something and he knows that she is dead um, however as the film progresses you get to notice that you, you can't tell whether the sisters are being truthful to him or not because um, he starts seeing these glimpses of a woman presumably her you know their child in this red raincoat around the city of Venice so you begin to wonder you know what, what's this all about um, he's he's starting to feel things and the psychic sister is starting to hear things as well um, ever since he's been in the city and um, a lot of strange occurrences happen throughout the film which I won't dive into very deeply but but um yeah because i don't really want to you know spoil the surprises or anything like that but um i will say I, I guess it is a twist ending um it it really does come off as a surprise and it's you know, i think a lot of people you know if you are used to films like this you probably will see it coming i'm not real sure but it it, is, it just makes you wonder you know with the whole narrative of the red raincoat and with everything going on with this whole second sight analyzation going on, it just makes for an incredibly great film. And the way the editing style is with uh, just the way they cut in and out of different scenes um, and just the way it's shot as well is just so, it's just so rememberable. You remember all these different faces and um, all the colors, the color spectrum and uh, all, all the little details, almost like a Hitchcock film, you know. And I think it's really quite an underrated film for what it offers, you know. So that's about all I should say about it, really. I mean, and then, you know, of course he runs into trouble working on this cathedral as well, where he um, almost gets himself hurt. And he's seeing all these different um, 
occasions going on throughout the city, you know, um, stuff like people getting murdered and, you know, just a lot of strange occurrences like that. And then a, a couple points where he sees his wife in different places with these sisters and he begins to wonder, well, I thought she was over here when really she's over here. So you can't really tell whose side you're on in this film and it's just really a wonder to watch, you know, this unfold before you for the first time. And I wish I could go back to the first time I saw this. For the genre, I would say, you know, it's basically just a psychological thriller. It's one of those films that kind of makes you think a lot. And um, I guess there is some horror aspects to it. Um, horror, thriller, if you want to really put it into those big categories. Yeah, for sure. Also does come with this uh, little, I think it's like a mini poster. But also a, uh, is it a poster? No, it's just like a... I don't know, some sort of artwork for the film. Uh, a lot of inner notes here talking about it, and uh, there's a few stills from the film as well. So yeah, a lot, lots to offer here, and uh, for such a simple concept, you would think, you know, <laughs> but once you invest some time into this and take your time being patient with the film, I think it really pays off. And currently on IMDb, this gets a 7.2 rating, I looked up before uh, filming this, and yeah, that sounds about right. I would rate it a little higher than that. I would say maybe a 7.4 sounds about right. But IMDb ratings are pretty accurate, but I would go a little higher with that on this film. So um, Donald Sutherland, I love you know a lot of his films that he did around this time. Of course, he was in Animal House, but <laughs> um, I liked him in Body Snatchers, the remake, and ordinary people to name a couple so uh, yeah I bet I guess that about sums it up and of how did I forget to talk about it the most controversial part of the film um, has to involve like a sex scene and it was kind of controversial at the time because I guess cinema wasn't really ready for um, you know mar married couples that really love to get it on um, it just it goes kind of graphic in the film for its time and you know, of course, I wasn't really expecting it. I wasn't really ready for it. I just kind of wanted to, especially for the first time, I was just like, okay, a normal sex scene. But uh, I guess we just don't think of how graphic it probably was during that era, you know, how um, married couples really get, get involved, you know. But I do like how it is kind of cut the way it is edited and with um, both the sex scene and in between there, they're getting dressed back on for the night. I think they I think they go out for the evening after that, and um, it has this it has just simple classical music. This uh, I think it's like a recorder or a flute playing in the background. Really sets the mood for um, just a just really a nice artistry and um, lots of different emotions and feelings you get throughout this film that uh, really make it a worthwhile enthralling experience so uh, that's about about all I got for this film so I do recommend this um, don't look now so uh, about wraps it up guys so um, not sure what else is gonna come next I only got got one record here and then I'm waiting for one more in the mail which probably now probably have to wait after Memorial Day so hope you guys have a good Memorial Day um, I'll be working uh, and that about wraps it up. So thanks again, and we shall see you soon.